Hey folks, welcome to What's New, the Peter Larman Outdoors radio show, and I'm your host, Peter Larman, and thank you once again for tuning in to us today. You know, there's been a lot of talk about, especially up here in, in uh, Ontario or, or Canada, however way you want it, but especially in Ontario, we've had a lot of talk about the number of tournaments that there there are out there. There's organizations, there's, uh, you know, there's Bass, there's the, uh, you know, Bass Masters series, there's the... Uh, the Bass Federation, and then, and then there's the other local clubs. And there's a numerous amount. And we've started, there's a new a new tournament series that started last year, and it's FLW Canada. with uh, And it was all started by President Corey Banford and his host of staff, which pretty much includes him and his wife. And, um, you know, they put on a great event. I was able to fish their event last year. It was fantastic. I had a great time. Um, you know, but like everything, they're working out bugs and, and getting everything settled. And this year, there's three big events, and uh, I'll get Corey to tell us all about those. But there's been a lot of talk saying, you know, nobody talks to anybody. All these organizations are trying to do their own thing. And I think we need to, to kind of clarify that. I mean, FLW, I haven't talked to Corey off air and, and, and you know, previous times. Yes, it's a new startup, but it's still branded by FLW. So they've got FLW regulations they still have to maintain and, and meet. And uh, also, not only that, but FLW Canada this year has got some really cool news that's going to make people that go to these events. Um, I don't want to spoil it, but go to these events. They're going to be able to get live feeds and stuff like that. So it's big announcements that have come out of FLW Canada this year. Um, so... I like to talk to Corey about that, and I know Corey's got some good news, and he's going to shed some information and try to put some of these rumors to rest uh, about FLW Canada. But before we get to Corey, let's take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back right after this. You're listening to What's New, the Peter Larman Outdoors Radio on WRVORadio.com. Looking for quality fishing tackle from knowledgeable staff that use the products and have experience in fishing? And do you want a dependable tackle shop that carries all the latest in some of the fishing industry's best known companies? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then Pro J Fishing Tackle in Scarborough, Ontario is that tackle shop. Jasper and the staff at Pro J Fishing Tackle will get you ready for walleye, bass, crappie fishing season. Pro J Fishing Tackle carries some of the popular brands like Shimano, Luz, Daiwa, Mega Bass, Angler's Choice, Yamamoto, Jackal, Sunline, just to name a few. Make sure you drop in and check out all of their products at their store location at 3467 Shepherd Avenue East, Toronto, or give them a call at 416-913-8305. Folks, welcome back. As I said earlier, on the show today, we have uh, the president of FLW Canada, Corey Banford. He's going to talk to us about his events and uh, changes that are happening in the whole tournament um, scene, if you will. Corey, welcome to the show. Hey, Peter. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on. You know, we're doing well. I mean, we're sitting here in the middle of a snowstorm on uh, on April the 8th, but other than that, we're doing okay. Yeah, it's brutal. Everybody should be crappy fishing, and uh, it's nothing but white stuff coming down right now. I hear you. Um, Corey, so go ahead and first of all, tell us your role with FLW Canada. Uh, my role is, yeah, I'm the owner, president, operator, CEO, waymaster, stage builder, pretty much uh, the whole kit and caboodle of uh, the, the whole deal. And um, uh, obviously, I noticed you in your little intro there. My wife, she's a huge, huge part of it. Um, you know, she pretty much does all the computer stuff, all the memberships, registrations, takes care of all that stuff. Because if I did it, it would uh, be a complete mess, I'm sure. <laughs> um, you're right. So it is a lot of work. So she looks after the logistics part behind the scenes. And you're the, the guy up front that takes care of everything. Um, Corey, this year, uh, l- let's get into a bit about um, what FLW Canada is, the three events, and then we can talk into uh, into what's really great about FLW Canada and why should people come to FLW Canada. Sure, yeah. Uh, we've 
and like you said earlier too, we just uh, last year we had the one event, our first inaugural event that we did on Big Rito, and uh, it was a it was a really good success. It went over very well, and we had the uh, to try to mimic kind of what FLW does down in the uh, states. We had our final day weigh in in the Walmart parking lot, and it went uh, over really well. It was probably the biggest crowd I've seen anywhere for a tournament in years, so uh, that was exciting. Um, this year we have three uh, open major events. One is uh, in Buckhorn, Ontario, which is uh, on the Tri Lakes chain of lakes. Uh, the next one is Bootley, Ontario, which is Rice Lake. And then our final qualifier of the year is uh, out of Cornwall, Ontario, which is Lake St. Francis. And our championship is back again on uh, Big Rito again for uh, for the four guys that get to go to the states. And that's the big the big prize at the end of the day of what uh, of what it all is is uh, four anglers get to go to the FLW Series Championships uh, down uh, Table Rock this year, which we already qualified, and next year it'll be somewhere else, which we don't know yet where that will be. Mm -hmm. So how so how does anybody go to register for FLW Canada? license and the proper live and stuff like that you can uh, you can fish and uh, we have a website uh, it is uh, www.flwcanada.com and like i said it's it's open to anybody you don't have to fish them all you can fish one if there's a one of those three lakes that you like you can just do it or you can do the whole series and obviously the more you do the more chances you have of making that final final championship so um, I can be reached anytime by my uh, all my information is on the website, my phone number, email. You can contact me anytime if you if anybody has interest in uh, fishing one of the events or even coming out just to watch. You know, and as I said, I, I got I had the opportunity to fish that inaugural event last year on Big Rito, and it. Um, you're right. I thought it was it was a class act. It was well done. Um, you know, again, like you said, it was a new thing. Uh, iron out some bugs and that, and I think you guys have done that uh, for this year. Yeah, no, we've done we've done a lot. Like I said, that was the that was the first event, and it was on the tail end of the whole season and stuff like that. So there's there's a lot new coming. Um, so yeah, it's we're doing our best to uh, pretty much like I said earlier, mimic uh, the what you get in the states as far as what you're going to see and how things are ran and uh, and all that fun stuff. So hopefully we can uh, live up to the FLW name quite well. And it, now that you brought that up, I, I, obviously. Um, you say you got to live up to the FLW name and the brand. Do they are they holding you to the same standards that they have in the states? Uh, no, not not really. I mean, we obviously have to protect the the brand name of, of FLW, um, but I can I can pretty much do uh, you know what I want as far as where events are, how I run them, uh, stuff like that. But again, if I was to do something very foolish, I know I would be getting a, a phone call from. Uh, from the CEO of FLW, so uh, I have to be very careful and make sure you know I, I put out the best product possible uh, as they do in the states. So, but other than that, no, I I don't really have to you know uh, check in and you know tell them what I'm doing and stuff like that. I, I want to be I want to have FLW in Canada just like they do in the states. I mean, obviously we will never uh, be to that level of you know uh, half a million dollar prizes at the end of the year, but uh, still to put out the same same type product all year long. Right, and again, you and I had talked about that off air. I mean, you know, bass tournaments in Canada, bass tournaments in general have been around are huge in the states. There's no doubt about it. It's a spectator sport. I mean, anyone that's watched uh, uh, any of the FLW events or any of the Bassmaster events, uh, I've noticed it, it's become a spectator sport. Do you see that ever happening in Canada? being the same as, uh, as it is in the States as far as you watch Bassmasters live as of today. Uh, you know, I checked in and I'm watching the guys fishing actually live on air. Uh, I don't think it'll ever get to that size of thing, um, but I, I do think it can be better than what we've had here as far as, like I said, our very first event of the year is, uh, is in Buckhorn. Uh, Buckhorn is a town that's extremely excited to have FLW come. They're actually putting on an expo. They're putting on a kids' derby. They're putting on barbecues. They're, there's going to be a band. Uh, so the goal is, is to have FLW tournament events and events within an event, not just you know a fishing tournament here this week and a fishing tournament there next week. And it's about getting families and friends and, and kids involved. And uh, to me, it's like, what a great concept because most of the tournament guys are guys. There are females that do do it, but the majority are men. So 
how better to get your wife to want you to fish more if there's stuff for the family and the kids to do. So that's what I'd really like to see happen. Every FLW Canada event be part of something bigger that's there. Uh, so hopefully we can get there. I, you know, I, I think it can. Um, but again, as far as you know, having you know TV shows on ESPN, our market's too small. Um, but again, I, I think we can do much better than what we're getting now. You know, that, that's a really cool idea. I like, I like that whole um, bring the family to the tournament. It's got something for them to do, um, you know, especially the kids, right? You, you know yourself, I'm a big proponent of kids fishing and, and getting kids involved in the outdoors, whether it's fishing or hunting or, or, or anything for that matter. But kudos to, to the town, kudos to them to, to recognize that there's an opportunity there um, for them to, to generate a lot more interest and a lot more revenue. Because, you know, we can get into the whole economics of tournaments. I think tournaments, when you get a multi-day tournament such as FLW Canada, I think it's got an economic impact on the host town, if you will, the host location that's got the, got the event. It, and, it does. It has a huge impact on towns economically. Uh, as long as it's done right, and, and this came from, I've, I've visited many towns and, and talked to uh, talk to them about bringing FLW there, and, and their biggest downfall was, they're like, well, you know, we've, we've funded towns coming in before, and, and they come in in the morning, you, you fish, and then you go home, and that's what's different with FLW, it's two-day events, so now they see the value, they're like, oh, okay, well then the anglers are coming in to stay a couple days, if we make it into an event, maybe the, the, the wife will come, maybe they'll bring the kids, maybe some friends will come watch so as long as it's done the proper way those towns are like holy crap you know these the anglers are going to be there for four or five days ahead of time pre-fishing but now when you're talking about bringing the family and the kids and they can come they got something exciting to do uh if they do you know small stuff is like petting zoos or like i said the little kids derbies or, or whatever they put on um at least it's it's, it's something for the whole family to enjoy. You, you know, the the father goes out fishing or whatever the tournament day, but the the, the rest of the family still got lots to do instead of sitting at home, not really caring what what you know he's got going on. Now now it's an exciting thing for everybody. You know, it is, and a uh, great economic thing for for cities or towns. And um, you know, take take an example from from Buckhorn. I mean, it, the prime example right there. They're turning it into an expo where people can come in and it's i think it's a win-win for both it's a win-win for um for the organization for flw canada and it's a win-win for the town and yeah, uh Buckhorn, Buckhorn really got it like they, they really did understand it and they, and they approached me about the whole thing and it, it was so exciting and a breath of fresh air to hear a town say listen we want you here yeah we we get it yeah so it, for them to step up and do everything they're doing it is excellent and people are going to see you know, an event like they haven't seen before in Canada. And again, it's the fishing is just the side part of it. Yes, at the end of the day, it is, right? It truly is. So, uh, so kudos to both of you guys, both yourself and, and, and Buckhorn. It's FLW Canada. And one of the things that, uh, again, you know, there was a big, uh, I don't want to say tra trash talking, but there was talk on, on Facebook earlier on in the week that these, all these organizations, they don't talk to each other. Clarify that for us. I know FLW Canada does. Yeah, it's, um, it, it, it probably has been for the past, I don't know, 10, 20 years. I, I'm not sure. I wasn't part of an organization to know if they talk back and forth or not. But, uh, but when I brought FLW to Canada, it's the last word in that is, is Canada. So for me to think I can handle just my area or, uh, it, and go across Canada and do it all myself, I, I'd, be, I'd be silly. So pretty much as soon as I signed the contract with FLW, I started reaching out to other organizations to say, hey, do you want to be part of this? Do you want to work together? Let's work on a schedule so I don't conflict with you. Um, what do you do? And, and one of the most exciting bits of news I had all year was when uh, we partnered with uh, Pro Bass Canada of Quebec. Uh, Gary and Liette are amazing people, and they run a top-class organization out of Quebec, and that's we, we talk on the phone, we're on Facebook all the time together, and, you know, we've, we've made a decision. It's like, okay, let's, you know, talk about uh, schedules. Let's talk about when we're going to bring FLW for one event into Quebec and, and all that stuff. And, and I've reached out to uh, organizations in, in, the, in the GTA area, and uh, I'm currently talking with New Brunswick, and I'm currently talking to somebody in northern Ontario. 
is it's about us working together to better the sport. Uh, I want to build bridges, not not tear them down. And I, I think that's been going on for too long. Like I said, I haven't been part of them to know if the other organizations have talked back and forth or not. But I know I sure want to. I want to work with everybody I can to build us all a better sport. You know what? That's amazing. It's uh, I mean, I love tournament fishing. It, it's great. You can only do so many at a time, obviously, for scheduling conflicts and what have you. But uh, I think it's great that, that you're working with these organizations in Pro Bass Canada out of Quebec. Um, like you said, class act, uh, great folks, great events that they put on to put together. So I'm looking forward to seeing that develop. And then I'll, as, you ta- as you talked about as well, in the, out, out east and in northern Ontario as well in New Brunswick. Canada, so the you know the more wide range we can get it, the, the better. That's it, and 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 again, we can't emphasize the fact of even the selling point. And I'm not going to reiterate that, but uh, the whole selling point on that is it's Canada. It's got an economic impact on the host location, uh, irregardless of where you are. So you know anyone that's got anything to do with anything to do with towns or tournament locations or whatever. You know, give FLW Canada a call. This is uh, this is where it needs to be, and this is where I think this is the the direction tournament fishing should be going. Uh, you know, and and that brings up a whole other debate, if you will. You know, you can't fish professionally in Canada. Well, you know what? Everyone in Canada they call themselves pros, and we're not. We're promotional anglers. Um, we don't make a living fishing tournaments. We don't. Now there are some that do. There are folks that go down to the states and fish. Great, that's you know fantastic. If you can do that, all the power to you. In Canada, unfortunately, our seasons aren't that long. Uh, we have that thing called ice that really interferes with a lot of boat launches. But th- I think if you're looking at getting serious about tournament fishing with an avenue to get down to, the, to fish into the states, FLW, FLW Canada is an option. And and I think what what Corey's got going on right now is uh, something that any serious angler, and even the kids out there that are are thinking about getting into tournaments or or getting their their feet wet with tournaments. I mean, I know there's some high school programs that are out there. I'm not sure if there's any university programs in Canada yet, but I'm sure that's not going to be too far off. It's great to see tournament fishing in Canada, kind of going in in that direction again. Now it's just up to the anglers and everyone else to support it. Canada is about. It's about opportunity. Um, like I said, the prize money is still going to be great. It's uh, it's not for everybody. Not everybody wants to go fish in the state, and yeah, it's never going to happen here in Canada. You're not going to be able to tournament fish for a living. Um, but we're we're giving an opportunity for four guys to get a shot every year at doing that, and it's it's a very quick path. Uh, you know, other organizations have had you know have have a path as well, but it, it's a very long, long road. And through us, it's you know it could be as much as two tournaments and you're there. Right. Last year it was one tournament and you're there. Mm-hmm. So. So. Corey, we got to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, I know you guys made a big announcement this year that's going to be taking part in all your events. Uh, like, we should tell our listeners about that when we come right back. Folks, you're listening to What's New, the Peter Larman Outdoors Radio Show on WRVO Radio Network. Livingston Lures. Livingston Lures is committed to bringing fishermen everywhere innovative, technologically advanced lures designed to flat out catch fish in fresh and salt water. With an exciting new line of crankbaits, lipless crankbaits, topwater baits, jerk baits, and wake baits featuring a unique sound and vibration technology. Livingston Lures is set to make some real noise across the fishing industry. Hey folks, welcome back. If you're just tuning in to us today, we're talking to President Corey Banford of FLW Canada. Right now there's three tournaments in, the, in, in Ontario with your chance and opportunity to have four anglers to go fish down in the States. And Corey, before the break, I had asked you to tell us, I know you guys made a big announcement on Facebook, um, I believe it was a couple weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, uh, with regarding to something that's going to be happening at, at each of these events. Can you elaborate on that for us, please? Yeah, for sure. With, uh, with our media team, uh, the Limit Fish Media, uh, they came up with a, an awesome idea of having um, 
I think some some form of live uh, online uh, results and uh, following along, uh, everybody able to follow along and participate. Uh, and the general idea is, is the teams instead of what has happened in, in the past where touching your phone is taboo, uh, now it's going to be more promoted for you to do that. Now you can't pick up and call your buddy down the lake. You can't pick up your phone and you know call some guy that knows hotspots. You're only allowed to pick up the phone and text in or email in a picture, a photograph, your weight. Uh, uh, maybe you see uh, something incredibly cool happen that has nothing to do with fishing while you're out on the water to send it in. Limit Fish Media is going to showcase that stuff all day long. Um, Bass Masters in the States has a thing called Bass Track. It, it's gonna, we're going to try to do it like that if we can get enough people to participate. All you have to do is text in, uh, you just caught a three pounder. You just caught, you know, even a, a one pounder, whatever. So we can let more people that aren't, you know, actually fishing stay up to date with what's going on. When you're out there fishing, it costs a lot of money. Maybe your wife all day long sitting there saying, oh, I'm worried about, oh, I hope he's really doing well. Well, now you'll be able to stay in contact. Uh, with them by by letting them know that hey this is this is how my day's going please come down to the way in I, I have a shot at this all kinds of all kinds of stuff like that and it, like I said it could be a picture it could be a text it could be whatever and like I said limit fish limit fish uh, totally come up with the idea and uh, it should be very very exciting that's that's really cool um, again it's a it's it's not reinventing the wheel I mean as you, as you mentioned you know there's bass tracks and that but that's something new in Canada. We have not been able to do that. We don't have, uh, you know, well, as you said, we're not allowed to only allowed to use our phones in emergency situations. This yeah, is not the way it currently is, and that's how my rules were. It was only call the tournament director, or obviously, you know, something really bad. You want to call nine one one first. You're able to do that. But now there's going to be a hotline number uh, for you to call. So um, uh, we encourage people to pick up their phones now and, and, and you know, send in whatever it is. And, and I think the reason why this came along was um, last year at the Canadian Championships, everybody says nobody really cares, nobody follows along, nobody pays attention. Well, on the final day at Walmart, this was a good news, bad news situation for me. Uh, six boats in, there was only 12 boats, six boats into the final, our live online results crashed. It, and it was, it was kind of mayhem on the stage because it was like, okay, nothing's working anymore. Uh, I found out after we got it all back up that it crashed because we had too many, too many people logging on to our website at the same time to watch the results. So that was the proof that, oh, wow, everybody is, following along. They do want to see what's happening live. So now we're, instead of just doing it from, you know, 4 o'clock till 5.30, whenever the weigh-in ends, now it's going to be all day long. I mean, you know, technology is technology, and it is what it is. Uh, it was 1,800 was what we had. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's, why, that's kind of why it went down. But, no, we have a totally brand-new website. I don't know if you've been on it or not, or yep. the people out there have been on it or not, but we've had... You know, that's why, you know, things have been kind of a work in progress over the last, you know, six months with us with getting uh, everything put together. But we have a total brand new website because we saw, you know, obviously that was an issue. Uh, again, it was a great issue because I can turn to sponsors and say, listen, people are watching. You know, we had 1,800 people on over the course of the weigh-in weigh -in time between 4 and 5.30. And that's why it went down. The, you know what, Corey, that's fantastic. And, uh, you know, I applaud you. Kudos to you guys. I wish I was the cause of that of that going down, but unfortunately, I did not make the the, the final weigh in or the final day weigh in or the cut. Congratulations to you guys! I think you guys are putting on something really cool. I think everyone needs to be uh, maybe a little open minded about it and um, look into it and give it a try. And again, I guess the biggest thing is is be open minded about it. This is where the future of tournament fishing is going. You know, I think the, the FLW Canada is a vehicle for that. And, uh, you know, let's, let's stop all the negativity talk uh, amongst ourselves. I mean, that's, that's fine if you're going to do it in a, in a closed environment. But I think when you get into, um, into social media or into a, an open environment forum like that, there's a lot of people, as, as Corey attested, you know, 1,800 people watching in or listening in or tuning in to, to weigh-ins and, and, you know, looking out for their, their favorite angler. And realistically, guys, you got to realize that, you do have an impact on the younger people's lives and that, and you know, they aspire to be us. 
as long as we may not know it, we may not believe it, but there are youngsters out there that want to be able to fish tournaments, admire what we do, and they look up to what we do. So when you put that tournament jersey on, you're representing yourself, you're representing the people on that jersey, but you're also representing the sport. The sport is a lot bigger than the name on the back of your jersey. And I think our anglers, we need to realize that, take the time to talk to the people that are at the weigh-ins, promote the sport as much as you can. And the negativity talk, I don't think should be in a public forum, um, such as Facebook or Twitter or social media, period. Uh, Again, that's just my opinion. And um, like everyone else, I'm entitled to one. And, uh, you know, that's how I feel. And... um, I'm not saying what I'm doing is the right way to do it, but I know that negativity doesn't really get us anywhere. I think FLW Canada is going in the right direction. So, Corey, congratulations on that. And uh, I wish you all the best and all the success with uh, from this day forward with FLW Canada. Well, thank you so much, Peter, and uh, I appreciate your whole last little spiel there. I, I, I think you were bang on. Um, uh, like I said, the, the negativity and all that stuff, we, we just all need to go out there and enjoy the sport we love. Uh, absolutely absolutely so again thanks again Corey, for for tuning in or joining us today um i know you're busy uh, even though it's april uh you know you got to get that boat out and get some crappy fishing done before uh tournament season starts but uh, i know you're always busy getting stuff and trying to make uh, flw better and talking to everybody all over the place so again thank you very much for joining us today i appreciate it uh, folks, this episode was brought to you by uh, ProJ Fishing Tackle out of Scarborough, Ontario at projfishing.com. Lou's, building innovative products that are faster, lighter, and stronger. George's Marine and Sports, making fun a reality. Livingston Lures, the difference is clear. Folks, take a kid fishing. They are the future of our sport and practice catch and release. Remember what I always say, work hard, but fish harder. I'm your host, Peter Larmond, and thank you for tuning in to us this week. And hopefully you'll join us again as we talk about what's new. Thanks for listening.